Imagine experiencing something so horrifying that your life just changes forever. Your opinions change, your belief changes. Heck, even the way you speak changes. That's what happened to Walter Kovacs, Rorschach, in the film Watchmen by Zack Snyder, based on the graphic novel Watchmen by Alan Moore. Look, I goof off on Zack Snyder a lot, but I don't hate the guy at all. I really respect his vision and what he brings to the table, and while I don't think he's the best writer, I do think his direction is very unique, and it really blends well together with the neo-noir tone of Watchmen. I've always thought of the film Watchmen as this perfect deconstruction of the superhero genre, which came in way too early. It would be perfect if it was released now, for example. So today, I will be talking about why a particular scene in the movie works, and we'll mostly be talking about the film Watchmen, rather than the graphic novel Watchmen. So in the film, Walter Kovacs, or as he likes to be called, Rorschach, has been arrested by the police and has been sent to prison. There, he's psychoanalyzed by this shrink who appears to be compassionate and understanding, but Rorschach understands everyone's secret intentions because he's experienced so much trauma in life. He understands that he's being interrogated instead of patients that are more unstable than him because he will bring fame to that psychiatrist, as Rorschach is a notorious vigilante who takes the law into his own hands. I don't like you. Is it a compromise to want to make you well? There are other men in here with behavior more extreme than mine, Doctor. Of course, they're not famous, are they? The psychiatrist gives Rorschach the, the Rorschach test to know where he is mentally, and it's an abbreviated version of what happens in the graphic novel, which is a psychoanalysis which takes several days. This was obviously cut down for time in the film. Now, this scene itself is color graded, like most of the film, to appear murky, with greens and blues making it appear dirty and unsanitary. There's a wide and a medium which show where the two characters are on screen, and when they speak, it's a shot reverse shot. Now, the psychiatrist moves around a lot during the scene, while Rorschach never moves, which creates a further disconnect between the doctor and the patient. What's great is that when the psychiatrist is showing off the Rorschach blots, he presents it not just to Rorschach, but in a way to the audience itself, as it's framed towards the camera. And this puts you in the shoes of the protagonist as we delve deeper into his psyche. And just like the graphic novel stated, Walter Kovacs, or Rorschach, doesn't blink throughout the entire scene. He literally... Does, does not blank, he just doesn't. His idol must be Hannibal Lecter or something. What I love about this scene is not just the direction, but the writing, and how Rorschach speaks is very broken and choppy. He doesn't speak like a normal person. It's almost as if he's preaching, and while the dialogue here wouldn't work if it were two regular people talking, Rorschach is most definitely not regular, and his rigid, antagonistic dialogue is a great contrast to the psychiatrist's warm, understanding manner of speaking. What you call compassion. Wanting to protect and understand the guilty. This rotting society, what it calls rehabilitation. Nothing short of compromise. We then finally get to the scene I wanted to talk about, which is this brilliant flashback to the time when Warshak first killed. And it's hinted at briefly with the dog head, but here it's fully explained. So the flashback begins by revealing Warshak, who's looking at two dogs fighting over a bone. Rorschach's narration throughout the scene allows the viewer to understand Walter Kovacs' thought process throughout the flashback. The dialogue here, ripped directly from the graphic novel, is brilliant. As Rorschach says, I was young then, too soft on criminals. I let them live. If the viewer is sane, they'll probably be thinking, wow, this dude is absolutely crazy. And the way the line is delivered is excellent, because it's delivered in such a carefree way, as if what he's saying makes total sense to him. Because it does make total sense to him. There is some great blocking going on in this shot. There's that famous triangle shape. I love the moon being the main source of light, followed by two bulbs on either side of the shot. And I especially love how Walter Kovacs almost fades into the shadows here. So in the story, Rorschach is going to this apartment looking for this little girl, and he has no idea what he's going to find. And as Rorschach violently kicks open the door, he's entering into unknown territory. And we as the viewer also have no idea what's in store for us, and the dark room creates a feeling of uncertainty. This is similar to what I explained in my Zootopia video. Yes, I just compared Watchmen to Zootopia. So Walter Kovacs keeps looking around the apartment, and the dialogue and visuals go hand in hand. We focus on Kovacs as he says that he found nothing in the apartment. I saw nothing. And we rack focus onto this iron heater or wood-burning stove. I'm not entirely sure, sorry. And anyways, we focus onto this thing, and he says... And then I found her. Which is just haunting, because she's obviously not there. Like, there's no body, 
and by intentionally hiding information, the scene just becomes that much more disturbing. Eventually opening this thing up, Kovacs finds the undergarments of the girl covered in blood. And this is the point in the scene where everyone goes, oh shit. So by withholding information, the viewer has to assume the worst in the scene, and slowly allowing the viewer to discover the truth along with the character is a great filmmaking technique. It's a visual medium, film, right? And the director has complete control over how long it takes Rorschach to open up a cabinet and find knives, unlike reading a graphic novel where the reader has complete control over the pacing. So slowly, we are shown the truth of what happened, and the confirmation makes it feel incredibly sickening. And Rorschach, shrouded in darkness, peers over by the window, and we discover that this entire time, the two dogs have been fighting over the little girl's friggin' leg. So this shot ties back to the very beginning of the scene, in which Rorschach casually sees two dogs fighting over a bone. Unbeknownst to him, they're actually fighting over the person he's looking for. And the sound mixing and editing here is just so disgusting and just satisfying. We hear the wrestling of the dogs, the crunching of the bone, and mixed in is the scream of the little girl. It's haunting stuff. Eventually, the killer gets back home and realizes the apartment has been broken into, so he goes in with a gun, and it's quiet. The score intensifies the entire scene, keeping you on your toes, building up anticipation. Until finally, Rorschach throws both dogs at the criminal. What proceeds is completely different and a lot more satisfying compared to the graphic novel, and Rorschach gets the criminal and ties him down with handcuffs. Rorschach here gets to play judge, jury, and executioner, and even though he's only 5'6", camera's positioned in a way that gives one character complete control over the other. The criminal is freaking out, attempting to lie, and the body language Rorschach gives off, the actor, Jackie Earl Haley, is brilliant. Okay. I confess. I killed her. Arrest me. The part in which the criminal confesses that he did in fact kill the girl he kidnapped has Walter Kovacs moving around, visibly frustrated. He's pacing, his breathing is labored, and he's battling himself. It's his internal conflict, and he's thinking, should I arrest this man, or should I kill him right here on the spot? And there are no words needed to understand what he's thinking, and that's a testament to Jackie Earl Haley's performance. Arrest me! I did it! I said I did it! Christ! Look, I've got a problem, man. F***ing take me in. I need help. No, don't! The combined pleading of the criminal, Kovacs' tempered movements, and the score, the slowly building strings, intensify the scene, and all the stress is relieved when Rorschach kills the criminal with the butcher knife. And this leads to one of my favorite lines in all of cinema. And this isn't a biome, it isn't a blank as a masterpiece. It's not a it's not a joke. I'm being dead serious. I love this line. Here it is. Men get arrested. Dogs get put down. Oh! So Rorschach keeps hacking away at this criminal's face, and we cut back to the interrogation room. Now with a close-up shot of Rorschach, so we can get every little detail of Haley's performance, and it also magnifies the importance of the scene we just watched. It feels like this entire sequence is much more successful in the film rather than in the graphic novel. In the graphic novel, the pages are cut up into nine panels, and for a lot of the investigation, there aren't any sound effects, there's no indicators to know how Kovacs is feeling, there's this red panel to signify shock, and when Rorschach gets the criminal, there's no internal conflict, there's nothing that really shows pain. It's as if Walter Kovacs truly became Rorschach when he just killed the dogs, and the criminal, who in the graphic novel Rorschach handcuffs and burns to death, is more like an afterthought. Either way though, the power this scene has can't be ignored. Watchmen, the film, and the graphic novel constantly showcase the ugly truth about humanity, the flaws of human nature, and this scene is what broke someone who is just trying to do the right thing. No longer able to see shades of gray anymore, after this event he only sees things in black and white, just like the mask he dons on his face. You think catching him matters? Justice matters. <laughs> Justice. Justice is coming to all of us, no matter what we do. It's a tragedy, really, knowing what happened to Rorschach when he was younger, understanding the trauma that contorted him into the person he is now. So yes, I do think the scene is more successful in the film, due to the body language, the breathing, the music looming closer, getting louder, as if the music is Rorschach trying to break free from Walter Kovacs. And it's rather good, and much better than in the graphic novel, at least to me. Anyways. 
That's what I thought about the scene. Did you like Watchmen? Did you hate it? <laughs> Do you even like Zack Snyder? Because I don't, I don't love the guy, but man, like, you know, sometimes he just does good stuff, you know? And if you did like Watchmen, what scene did you like from it? Was it that etchy scene? <laughs> Let me know, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing. Hit that notification bell to get notified whenever I post. And if you want to support Brown Table, I have a Patreon. There's merch available on the Teespring as well. Thanks, guys and gals, for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.